Welcome, my name is Nicole and in this video I will show you how to run an advanced necessary condition analysis. We will demonstrate how to evaluate the ceiling line accuracy and I will show you how to perform a statistical significance test of the effect size. I assume that you have the example dataset averaged loaded into RStudio. Plus, I assume that you have already opened the library necessary condition analysis. That is, you are ready to start working. If you do not know by now how this works, please watch the preceding videos. To perform an advanced necessary condition analysis, the command line looks a little bit different from what we have learned so far. First of all, you provide a name to your model. In the example given in Jan's quick start guide, this name is called model. Let us use that. With the arrow that comes or that points to model, you then tell our studio that the following analysis is to be stored under this name model. We now use the command for an advanced necessary condition analysis, that is NCA underscore analysis, and then in brackets something that looks familiar, namely the name of the dataset, averaged in our case, the vector of potential necessary condition variables, these are stored in the columns 3 to 7. the column in which we have our dependent variable for direct investment performance, that is column number two. And then we add a command that provides us with a statistical significance test. It is called test.rep is equal to 10,000. I press enter. With this command test.rep a number of random samples is created and the number of random samples in our example is 10,000. That is the number that you have provided within the command. With this command there is a random number of samples created that represents a distribution of effect sizes under the assumption that the zero hypothesis is true, namely that the two variables we are looking at, the potential necessary condition, and the outcome are not related. This distribution is then used for the comparison with the observed effect size and then used for calculating the respective p-value that we are already familiar with from any kind of other statistical programs such as SPSS and a regression model. When it's done, it does not automatically present the results, but you can identify from this small little arrow over here that our studio is done with the relevant estimations. To now also get an overview of the results, you need to put another command into the command line. This command is nca underscore output and then in brackets model, which provides you with a very basic setting of results. As soon as it is done, you see that RStudio provides results for all the different variables, one after the other. Let us maybe take the example of political stability, which is provided over here. Let us go through the output. At the beginning of the output, you will find some information on the empirical scope of the data values, that is, the minimum and maximum values observed in your dataset for the relevant necessary condition, political stability, and the outcome variable here for direct investment performance. What is then maybe even more relevant or interesting for you as a researcher is to get an overview of the accuracy of the different ceiling lines and the statistical significance. The statistical significance is evaluated by looking at the p-value and that is very similar to the SPSS p-value that is provided. In our example, if we look at the CRFDIH ceiling line, we have a p-value of 0.008. What are you doing as a researcher? You are comparing this value to your desired alpha level. So for example, if you are interested in a probability of error of 5%, that is an alpha level of 0.05, 
you would evaluate whether this p-value is below 0.05. This is the case, so this means that the effect size generated for political stability is statistical significant. Another relevant indicator to look at is the accuracy of the ceiling line. In our example, we decided to always go for the CRFDH ceiling line. For the CEFDH ceiling line, which is a step function, we know that is a perfect fit to the data set because it's just a step function that goes over the different data points. The CRFDH ceiling line is a slope line that goes through the CEFDH ceiling line and that can be more or less accurate. This accuracy, or the number of data points that might be above the line, is provided over here. That is, this number above provides you with an information about how many observations are above the ceiling line, and hence in the empty zone. What is called C accuracy over here is the number of observations on or below the ceiling line divided by the total number of observations and multiply by 100. In our example, 92.7. For a sample of 55 observations, with four observations being above the line, I would evaluate this as pretty good. These are the most relevant indicators to get a basic interpretation of an advanced necessary condition analysis. As usual, in the case of any questions, please just get in touch with either myself or with Jan.